Today on TFL Bike, we are answering the age old question Monkey versus Grom, which one should you buy? This is the all new 2023 Honda Grom, and this is kind of the sport bike styled mini moto from Honda. For 2022, this was all new, so all these changes carry over for the 2023 model year. For 23, you get this nice yellow paint scheme, but the new bike has new bodywork, it has a new motor with an extra fifth gear, it has an actual replaceable oil filter, which a lot of Grom owners were begging Honda for, new dash, new instrumentation, but overall, it's pretty much the same compact little sport bike that we know and love from Honda. And you might not be surprised to hear that I am representing the retro alternative. This is the Honda Monkey, and this one in particular is actually the older Honda Monkey. So this particular Monkey doesn't have the updated five-speed powertrain that's in the Grom, but if you buy a brand new Honda Monkey, you will get that same powertrain that's in the Grom. Really the biggest difference, on the surface level at least, is that the base price on the Monkey is 4200 and the base price on the Grom is 3500 both the Monkey and the Grom have pretty much the same brake setup. You have a single disc up front with a dual piston caliper, and this Monkey does have ABS. All the Monkeys have ABS for 2023, but the Grom, it's an option. So this is a $3,500 bike, but if you add ABS to it, it goes up to $3,800, and that makes the difference between these two bikes only $400. Another major difference between these two bikes is the way that they look. Obviously, like we mentioned, this Monkey is very retro and the Grom is a little bit more new school, although this current generation of the Grom does have slightly more rounded edges than it used to, but still, you get a lot of plastics, composites on the Grom, whereas the Monkey, tons and tons of metal, makes it a little bit more of an old school bike. Dimensionally, these two bikes are very similar. The Monkey has about two inches less wheelbase. It weighs you know, about four pounds more and has a seat height half an inch higher. So size-wise, they're very similar. But when you walk up to both bikes, the Grom looks like a much bigger motorcycle because of all the bodywork around its tank. So at least visually, it seems bigger. One big advantage of the Monkey is this retro styled and very soft, squishy, comfortable seat. It's a lot thicker than the seat on the Grom and it's a lot more comfortable. But, tit for tat, one advantage of the Grom, passenger pegs. The Monkey doesn't have that. This is nice. The exhaust is pretty different on these bikes, or at least it looks different, but they sound really similar, so. If you care about sound, neither of these bikes sound all that good until you put an exhaust on them, and then they sound pretty much the same. Okay, let's see if we've got enough power to get in with traffic. Yeah, it helps that we're going downhill, but um, honestly, the nice thing about these 125s is that they've got enough push to get you around most traffic situations. It's not a highway bike, but you can get around town. Uh, my favorite thing about the Monkey as opposed to the Grom is how comfortable this seat really is. It's very plush and I'm very comfortable on this bike. And even though it's a small bike, riding position, really not bad. I'm upright and I'm comfortable. Also, I know Case was talking about the seat on the Monkey being a lot more comfortable and you would think that that would mean that the Monkey is a much more comfortable bike, but I actually find both of them to be really comfortable. Yeah, you do have a little more cushion and suspension out of that seat on the Monkey, but at the same time, this Grom has this really big in-cut portion right here for your legs to grip onto, and the Monkey doesn't have that. So if you're the kind of rider that likes to grip the hell out of the tank with your legs, as I do, you'll find it easier to do on the Grom than the Monkey. Both these bikes have very different keys too. You have a really tiny traditional motorcycle key right here for the Grom, and then the Monkey gets a much more round, uh, almost a more premium key with that little Honda insert. It's old school, matches the style of the bike, but on this new Grom, 
and start it up. This is a brand new LCD display right here. It's got a black on white theme there. Not the best looking in the industry, but it gives you everything you need to know and it's easy to see. Fuel gauge time, you have a tack, uh, speedometer, trip computer, odometer, and what's really cool is even a gear position indicator. Of course, with the retro motorcycle, you get a simpler screen setup. Kind of comes with the territory of being old school. Not as much information. So you do have a fuel gauge, you've got your speedometer, you have your odometer, and you can have different trip A and B settings, but really not much else. You don't get a gear position indicator, which is a bit of a bummer. You do have some dummy lights here at the bottom, but it's not too extensive. Both of these bikes are infinitely approachable. They're just unstressful because they're small, they're light. The only time that it's kind of a pain is on a really fast highway road if you have a semi trying to run you down from behind. That's not ideal, that's a bit stressful, but otherwise it's really difficult to be in a situation where one of these bikes stresses you out. And that's what makes them fun for beginners, but it's also a nice thing for an experienced rider. If you want maybe a second or third bike in your garage to just mess around with, completely for fun, not taking yourself too seriously, there's no better way to have fun than spending some time on a little bike like these. I do want to talk about aftermarket support a little bit on these two bikes because that's a big part of mini motos is what you can do to them. And the good news is both these bikes have a lot of aftermarket support. Um, if you're a stunt rider and you want to do like a dual brake setup on your rear brake and do a stunt cage and wheelie this bike all over town, probably the ground's the one to go with. You have more options for stunt cages and brakes and things like that. However, the Monkey has a lot of aftermarket parts available too. As you may know, I have a blue 2021 Honda Monkey that I personally own. We've done a video or two on it on the channel. And that bike has like four grand worth of aftermarket parts dumped into it. It's a lot faster than a stock Monkey. So either way you go, if you want to start modding your bike out, they're both great options. That's more of like the super stylish head turner sort of mods. And this is more of the do wheelies all over the place and make the bike indestructible. At least that's the way I see it. Tires on these two bikes look pretty different. So over here on the Grom, much smoother, much more street going tire, although it does have some deep grooves into it. So we're on some gravel right now. This tire will do just fine. Over here on the Monkey, we have Pirelli SL60s. These are not the stock Monkey tires. We swap these out to make them a little more capable in Moab, but you do get a similar off-road tire when you get the Monkey from the factory. It's honestly not all that different from the tire that comes on the Grom. It just has a little more of a retro tread pattern cut into it. Maybe a little bit better on the dirt, but Let's be honest, neither of these bikes really need a super sticky set of tires for going fast on the street, nor do they need super knobby tires for going in the dirt. They're mini bikes, they're meant to be thrown around and have fun with, and uh, both these tires suit the bike just fine. The front suspension on both these bikes are completely identical, minus the color of the outer fork tube, but the rear suspension, pretty different on both these bikes. So the Monkey, you get old school twin shocks, and then on the Grom, just like the sport bike, mono shock right in the center. All in all, these are both just really fun bikes. You can't go wrong with either of them. People stop you to talk about them all the time, no matter which one you're on. And they both look pretty killer, especially this new Grom. You know, the Monkey has the new engine and stuff for this year, but the bodywork's unchanged. The bodywork on this is all new for this year, so if you want something that not as many people have on the road, at least for now, this is probably the pick. And I just think it looks really cool. It's a cool mix between retro and new and sporty. So which one should you get, Grom or Monkey? It really comes down to form versus functionality. If you want a really good looking bike, get the Monkey. Probably turns more heads than the Grom does. If you want something a little more functional, displays more data up on the dash, has rear passenger pegs, probably go for the Grom. But if you're shopping for a used one, I'd say get whichever one you can get a better deal on. They're both really fun bikes and you're gonna have a blast on either one. Can't go wrong. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to head on over to alltfl.com. That's our new website where you can check out all the content across every TFL channel, website, and podcast. So go over there, check it out, and we'll catch you in the next video.